I believe 2024 is the event horizon year for cryptocurrency worldwide. Stick around to understand why. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another video. Again, traveling with the family. So I'm sorry for any uh, issues during the video. Last video that I recorded went well, so this shouldn't have any issues as well. But I do believe we are in an event horizon scenario. What is an event horizon? Well, I don't know if you remember uh, Interstellar, if you watched that movie, uh, you remember at that time when they are uh, getting closer to a black hole, uh, there's a point once you cross, you get sucked in and you cannot go back. So you get sucked in inside the black hole and you can use whatever force, strength, energy you have. You're not, it's not going to be enough to take you away from the forces that are pulling you in to the black hole. I think this is exactly what is happening to crypto right now. The world is at a point where everyone knows about cryptocurrency. Even if they never used it, even if, even if they never interacted with it, we're in a point where crypto is a strong point for a candidate for president of the United States of America. So crypto is becoming very relevant and important in a lot of spheres of society, not only finance, also for the technology itself. So even SWIFT, which has been here for a long time, and of course, China, uh, BRICS countries are trying to move away from SWIFT. We are seeing answers coming from the form of blockchain technology. So we're going to cover all the major news that makes me think that from here now, there is no turning back for cryptocurrency. Before we start, I'd like to point out that not because it is a major win for cryptocurrency, that does not mean that it will reflect right now an increase in price on any major tokens, Bitcoin, Ethereum, Solana, BNB, whatever. No, it just means that the technology is good enough and the backbone of cryptocurrency, so the blockchain, oracles, the whole shebang, not necessarily the cryptocurrency itself, it is very strong enough to be capable of substituting, taking away what we have right now for payment systems, for transfer systems. So we're talking SWIFT, we're talking P2P data transfer, not only money transfer. So let's start with Ethereum news. Ethereum, after the merge, it has become deflationary. So ultrasound money, the whole shebang, you most likely heard that story before. So right now there's people who most likely are not Ethereum maxis, so they're kind of against Ethereum. They're saying Ethereum is no longer deflationary because for 73 days straight, it has been inflationary. So that is going against the whole ultrasound money uh, thing. It shouldn't be like the dollar, shouldn't be like the euro, shouldn't be like the yen. It shouldn't be inflationary. So what's going on? So there's a lot of people bringing a narrative that Ethereum is not good period. Uh, when you look at the charts, actually, like you're seeing right now on ultrasound.money, you can see that this scale of 73 days straight being inflating is still very, very low, very, very well below the amount of total Ethereum being burned. So being taken away from the blockchain. So overall, we're still burning more than uh, what is being created, what is being minted. And this just confirms that even when a lot of people, a lot of narratives are trying to bring Ethereum down. I don't think Ethereum is going anywhere. Of course, with L2s, L3s, whatever other scalable solution we can find, mainnet is going to become a little bit more obsolete uh, for speeds, for transaction, for costs. Um, but it will still, everything will still be built on top of Ethereum mainnet, like we see for Arbitrum, Optimism, Base, uh, all these L2s, Blast. So Ethereum is still the answer for a lot of things. Now, it isn't the answer for everything. As someone who likes Bitcoin, I'm loving what's happening to the Bitcoin network, the Lightning network. We're having a lot of new things being built there, new proposals, new things that we're seeing there, like ordinals, for example. So there's a lot of very interesting and there's a lot of potential on all major blockchain technology. And that even counts Solana even though I don't like to admit that Solana has something good going on, but they do. And we're going to talk about that in a little bit. Still keeping that on Ethereum news, the Venek firm has just filed the form for their ETF on Ethereum. If you don't know, for Bitcoin, they did the same thing, but they did it seven days before the ETFs were launched. So if history repeats itself, or at least it rhymes, we're not far away at all from Ethereum ETFs being released because Venek is usually one of the last to do these things, to file these forms. So an 8A has just been submitted to the SEC just a while ago from Venek. So we should be seeing this ETF soon. From the payments side of things, we have a few news from Bitcoin and from Solana. The major one that hits close to home is from Nubank. If you don't know, Nubank is one of the biggest neobanks 
from Latam. So it is a Brazilian fintech. I use them every day. I have my business banking account on Nubank. So it is a major, major bank. I swiped away a lot of other banks here in Brazil and also in a lot of other countries in South America. So in Latam, Nubank is one of the biggest. Warren Buffett invested in Nubank, just so you have an understanding on how big Nubank is. So Nubank is partnering with Lightspark, which is a crypto protocol and Lightspark is trying to bring in the universal money addresses via the Lightning Network and merge that with Nubank. So everyone, instead of using Swift, they would just use something like an address or an email. It will be a unique address for your money. Like for example, if you're used to Cash App or Zelle, it will be something like that built on the Lightning Network that will connect all Nubank users for you to receive and send money in a quick and fast way without using Swift. So from someone who has to receive and send money to other countries, and a lot of times, if I'm not using cryptocurrency, so if I have to use fiat, it is a pain in the butt, mainly because it takes a lot of time. It takes sometimes days for you to receive or send the money and because it is not trackable. So you just have to wait to, for the other person to say, hey, I received that money and because it is pricey. So sometimes I pay $40 to send X amount of money. So if I have to send a small amount of money, like 200 bucks, it doesn't make sense for me to use Swift because it will take a long time and the fees are expensive. Now, this solves and this goes against Swift, which a lot of people are not happy about. I am personally very, very keen to leave Swift away, never use that again. If I could, if there was a very easy way to go on and off with Fiat, so a Fiat on ramp and off ramp, um, it would be amazing to just do every payment in cryptocurrency. Of course, that brings a lot of technical issues for people who never used crypto before, who don't have a wallet. So there's a lot of issues when it comes to crypto payments so far. Your mom, your aunt, your grandpa, they're not going to be able to do that as fast and as responsive as you are because you are the enthusiasts but this is a great great step in the way so nubank is doing something very very good i love it and i'm excited to see more but on solana news solana is also working on a very good way to integrate crypto payments in websites so they're calling these blinks these blinks are just embedded lines of code that allows you to see a url and through that url to interact pay receive deposit whatever it is do transactions on websites that are not dApps. so these are not dApps. these are common websites they're web 2 websites not web 3 related but they have web3 integration throughout these blinks so to receive to pay so you can see these examples here uh, this person just added a link on their tweet with this link from the twitter feed from x feed you can buy an nft tip someone receive money vote stake swap and so much more so it is like you're embedding part of web3 inside a web2 page like facebook like twitter x youtube whatever it is this brings in a lot of use case scenarios and simplified this huge bottleneck which is integration and usability for people who are not DeFi natives like you and i so another example that you can see right here this is a quick uh, pop-up here or just a small window in a website for a virtual horse bet so you have right there the four names of the four horses and you can bet 50 usdc inside this website this website being a web 2 website and not a web 3 so imagine this technology with the banking system from Nubank or whatever other technology we can use. We can use Ripple, we can use a lot of different blockchain technologies to substitute Swift, which are way better, way cheaper, and way faster. Imagine you opening your phone, clicking on your bank app, sending money to someone on the other side of the world. So my good friend, Crypto Ricardo, for example, in Australia, I send him $100 and I send it in whatever currency it is because it is going through the blockchain. It will be fast, it will be traceable. He will get it. He can swap it to whatever other currency he wants, fiat or digital currency. We draw it and then him on his computer, he can open, he can be on Facebook, he can be on Twitter and he sees someone doing crowdfunding for um, something for an event whatever that is whatever that could be and he just interacts with these blinks and he sends that money he just received from me so you can see how that would change the world it would change financial institutions forever this is why as i mentioned at the beginning of the video this is an event horizon for me i think from now on we will be seeing governments that need to approve cryptocurrency need to do positive regulations and not negative regulations like we saw until now so governments were just limiting blocking banning cryptocurrency but now they have to approve they have to protect users they have to secure users they have to 
audit firms. They have to do everything and empower to make sure cryptocurrency is stable. It is good. It is fast and it is good for their people, good for their country, good for the users, everything. So imagine that that is a very, very possible scenario that I see happening because right now everything is being crypto related. Everything in the news that we see most of the time, it has to do with cryptocurrency and how it can help people, not only because of the assets itself, but because of the technology, which is at the end of the day, as everyone likes to say, we're here for the technology. So imagine like me, you have a glass half full vision. So you believe in a positive future. You believe these things will happen very, very soon. You believe blockchain technology will be mainstream. Payments will be through blockchain technology. Um, all of these things. What can you do to profit from this? Of course, as I said before, it is not because this becomes mainstream that it affects the underlying asset price itself, or maybe it won't affect right now, but maybe in a projected future, it will. What can you do? Well, you can be bullish and bet on that bullishness. How can you do that? Well, you can do that with options. For example, you can go to Betopics, which is the first link in the description, and you can buy calls. You can buy leaps on Ethereum, on Bitcoin. Right now, we offer just those, but we have leaps options that expire just next year. So it is a bet on these assets for one year ahead. Can you imagine what price Bitcoin will be in the next year? I believe that in one year from now, if you are watching this video in 2025, Bitcoin will be above 100K and Ethereum will be above 5K. And I bet, and, and I did open these bets. I did open these leaps. Right now, of course, they are in positive because I opened that closer to all time highs. So close to 70K on Bitcoin and close to 4K on Ethereum. But I do believe that by one year, these assets will be way above the strike itself of the options that I chose. So do you believe so as well? Well, you can go right here on Bitcoin or on Ethereum. You can switch between one or the other. And what you can do, you can select here the expiration, the last expiration, 28th of March, 2025. The strike itself for leaps, I like to go at the money or in the money. Well, of course, the most in the money you go, the more expensive this option becomes. And the most out of the money you go, the least expensive this option becomes. But again, out of the money leaps, they don't have a lot of intrinsic value. They tend to fluctuate in price way more. Not financial advice, but I would personally go for at the money or in the money options for leaps. So for Ethereum, if you want to do that, for example, you could go for a 3K or you can go for a 2500. So let's say you go for a 3K and here you put the amount of options you want. So right now for one contract, you're paying 1500 bucks. But the good thing about crypto options is that you can do, you can go fractions of options. So you can see I open a 0.1 options contract. So my total price will be 154 bucks. So do you believe Ethereum by one year in the future will be above this price? I do. And if you also do that, you can do this bet. You can open this and the highest Ethereum is the more intrinsic value this option will have, meaning the more expensive it will be. If you're paying 154 right now, this is your maximum loss for this leap. And if Ethereum goes to 6k let's say this 154 can become 500 a thousand who knows it is just it just depends on how much volatility there is in the market at the time uh, how much the movement of the underlying asset is at the time of uh, expiration or at the time you close this position so if it is above above the, the uh, 3000 by one year in the future of course you don't have to hold it all the way to expiration maybe in a few months ethereum goes up 5k 6k and you can close that position and cash out the profits so leaps are very very good for these stocks for these options for these uh, underlying assets that have a very good future so if you believe that just like i did for example you're half full glass kind of guy this is a good way for you to make money even with a small amount of capital so what are your thoughts on this whole event horizon thing let me know down in the comments and we can share more info, more news there. That being said, thank you very much for watching. We already posted on the community tab the user that won the $100 giveaway. We're going to be doing another giveaway soon. So we're going to be getting in touch. Well, I don't know if by the time you're watching this video, that person got deposited. As I'm traveling, things get a little bit tricky for me to on a timeline scale for if this is before the video, after the video. But we were getting that sorted soon and we will be doing another giveaway very, very soon. So thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Have a good weekend. Peace.